Russian leader Vladimir Putin has convened a meeting regarding the situation in the regions bordering Ukraine and demanded that Russia's defense ministry push the enemy out of Kursk Oblast. The defense ministry is definitely facing the main task of pushing the enemy out of our territories and, in coordination with the border service, ensure robust protection of the state border, he said. Putin also claimed that Ukraine seems to be trying to improve its future negotiating position. It is now clear why the Kiev regime refused our proposals to return to the plan for peaceful settlement, Putin said. The enemy, with the help of its Western masters, it is doing their bidding, and the West is waging war against us using Ukrainians, seeks to improve its negotiating position in the future. But what kind of negotiations can we even talk about with people who indiscriminately strike civilians, civilian infrastructure or try to create threats to nuclear power facilities, the president went on to say. What can we even talk about with them? He said that Russian armed forces are advancing along the entire line of combat engagement in the special operation zone. The pace of advancement of the Russian armed forces along the entire front has increased by 1.5 times. Kiev tried to destroy the cohesion of Russian society, but it failed, the number of those wishing to sign a contract with the Russian armed forces has increased, he said. The situation in the Kursk region is complicated, 28 settlements are under the control of Ukraine, Alexei Smirnov, acting governor of the Kursk region, said in a meeting with Putin. The fate of nearly 2,000 people from the province is unknown, he added. He added that Ukrainian forces had advanced 12 kilometers into Russian territory in an incursion that began on August 6. There is no clear front line in the Kursk region, which makes it difficult to determine the enemy's location, he said. Alexei Smirnov told that an anti-tank ditch has already been dug in the Kursk region for 40 kilometers. According to him, sabotage groups with Russian documents are operating in the Kursk region. На сегодняшний день под контролем противника находится 28 населенных пунктов. Глубина проникновения на территорию Курской области составляет 12 километров. Ширина по фронту 40 километров. Ну, это, 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 послушайте, Алексей Борисович, это военное да. ведомство вам доложит, какая там ширина и глубина. Вы расскажите нам про социально-экономическую ситуацию, я помощи людям доложите. Да, но у нас 28 человек. For now, the Russian military command is relying on existing units deployed in the international border area and readily available forces in the rear, most of them conscripts and irregulars, to counter Ukraine's incursion into the Kursk region. As the analysis of the American Institute for the Study of War, ISW, says, at present Russia does not want to transfer forces from the east in order to prevent Ukraine from disrupting the Russian offensive in this part of the front. At the same time, of the Russian invasion, Russian conscripts, FSB border guards, and fighters from the Chechen Special Forces Units Akhmat, operating under the command of the Russian Ministry of Defense, were operating in the Kursk region. At the same time, as analysts write, the Russian military command soon transferred forces from the operational reserves, additional units staffed with conscripts, Spetsnaz, Special Operations Forces, additional Chechen Special Forces Akhmat, operating as part of the Russian Ministry of Defense, the first corps of the army of the Donetsk People's Republic and former Wagner Group officers to the Kursk region to protect against further Ukrainian advance and recapture the territory. It is possible that the Russian military command is currently transferring more experienced and better equipped forward units from the east or south of Ukraine to the Kursk region, but it will most likely take additional time for such units to arrive in the Kursk region, the ISW notes. However, one of the Russian war correspondents on August the 9th claimed that units of the 44th Army Corps of the Northern Group of Forces were operating in the Rilsk area, which suggests that the Russian military command could be transferring units accumulated by the Northern Group of Forces for an offensive operation in the north of the Kharkov region. This war correspondent's assertion, if true, suggests that the Russian military command assesses the Ukrainian operation as more significant. The significant redeployment of elements of the northern group of forces to the Kursk region 
suggests that the Russian military command has decided that the disruption of the offensive operation in the northern Kharkiv region is a necessary sacrifice to properly respond to the Ukrainian invasion while avoiding redeployment from higher priority areas of the front line, the ISW notes. At the same time, analysts emphasize that larger-scale redeployments of Russian troops from frontline areas will likely occur more slowly and more combat-ready forward units may begin to arrive in the Kursk region only in a few days.